Hi there, I'm Professor Juris, and I wanted to go over how to dip and dunk uh, 4x5, 8x10 sheet film, how to process sheet film by the dip and dunk process. Um, so to start with, you're going to be doing this in total darkness, so you got to acquaint yourself with everything and know where everything's at. What I usually do is I will take my film hangers and I will um, set them on a desk somewhere or set them on a table, and then I'll get my um, film holders and I'll have them setting out there as well. And then what I would do is in total darkness is I would take um, and empty the um, film holders, one piece of film at a time, and I load them in the hangers. So what you're going to do with the hangers is um, you actually will pull this little bar open and then you'll slide the piece of film into the hanger and push it in all the way and then close the hanger up. And you'll go through and do that with um, four pieces of film if you have four pieces to develop. If you only have two, um, I would recommend always doing them in the at the bottom to make sure that they are, that's the safest place for them is in the bottom of the uh, hanger. Now, what I'll do is once I load four in this, I will set this aside, maybe lean it against a, a wall or one of the larger bases. Um, you could like lean them up like that. You wanna make sure they're not gonna slide so you should have something um, like leaning against them so they don't slide and fall down. You don't want them to fall on the floor. Um, and But once they're all loaded, then what you're going to do in total darkness is you'll start with the developer. So with the tank, um, and I usually, I can do up to about 10 of these at one time. So I can hold 10 of these hangers at one time. So I will pick them all up and you want to submerge them, submerge them down into the developer. And once you've submerged them into the developer, what you're gonna do is kind of pick them up and, and wrap them a little bit. What you're actually doing then is dislodging the air bubbles, the same as um, when you develop film in a 35 millimeter stainless steel tank and you're wrapping the tank to dislodge the air bubbles. You're gonna do the same thing um, to dislodge the uh, air bubbles on the thing. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna do your subsequent agitation, which is probably about 20 seconds. So usually once I've wrapped the, things like that and got him into the developer then I will turn on my timer on the wall using a gray lab timer for the amount of time that you're going to develop for now I generally use and what we use at Sinclair is HC 110 developer and it's usually mixed to dilution B and for like triax film the time is about eight minutes so um, eight minutes at dilution B and HC 110 at 68 degrees is about room temperature so um, with that in here, the one thing you want to make sure of when you're putting your things in here is that um, that the developer is filled all the way up to this edge right here. You want to make sure that it's covering the film and that the, it's not down low, like somebody had spilled some or got evaporated. So you want to make sure that the developer tank is filled. We always develop from left to right the same way we read. So if the tanks are not marked where you're developing at, generally the tank on the left is the developer, stop bath. Uh, fixer and then hypo clearing agent and then we have a tank for washing so what I will do then is once the the film is in the developer I've, I've wrapped it I will turn on my time and I'll give it the initial agitation which is again about 20 seconds so what I'll do with those 20 seconds is pick the real or pick the rack up and let it drain by one corner put it back in um, pick it up let it drain by the other corner put it back in, pick it up, let it drain by the other corner. And I'm gonna do this until the whole 20 seconds has elapsed. Once the 20 seconds has elapsed, then I'm just gonna let the film sit in there and I'm gonna watch the clock again and I'll do my subsequent agitations and it's just like film. Um, what I do is three turns every minute. So when the clock gets back up to the top, I will go ahead and pick my rack up and um, let it drain one time, put it back down in, pick it up, let it drain again put it down, pick it up, let it drain again. So I have three times coming in and out. And then I'll just let it set for another minute till it comes up to another minute. Then do the same thing again um, until the whole, whole time has elapsed. Once the time has elapsed, I'll move them to the next tank. And you can move, you know, you can reach in pretty quick and grab like five of them if you're using like 10 of these and, you know, do five and then do the other five or you can try to grab them all at once. Now you can also, if you're ever setting this up at home, you can buy racks that'll hold like 10, of the, 10 or 12 of these holders and you can um, pick them up. I don't know if they fit in these tanks, but you can get stainless steel tanks and stuff that all this was actually made for. And you can find a lot of that on eBay for um, really reasonable prices these days. But So I will go into the stop bath then. Now the time in the stop bath 
Um, if you think about it, just think about when you're developing film. This is film. Um, generally, the stop bath is the same for you know all black and white processes. So it's like one minute in the stop bath, minute and a half in the stop bath. So you're gonna put it in there um, for a minute, minute and a half, and then you know put it in, pick it up, drain it, and you're just, it's constant agitation. Then you go to the fixer. Again, the fixer time depends upon the kind of fixer that you're using. We use Kodak Rapid Fixer here, um, Part A. We do not use a hardener in the fixer, um, but with, with Part A Rapid Fixer, the fixing time should be like seven minutes um, and with constant agitation. So for seven minutes, you're just gonna you know, pick it up, put it back in, pick it up, put it back in. Um, and then generally, if we were doing this in a sink, at the end of the fixing time, what you would do is put it into a rinse for a minute or two to try to rinse the bulk of the hypo off of the film. Um, we don't use it, do it in a sink here. We have it set up on a table. So what we do is we go directly in the hypo clearing agent. So going from the fixer to the hypo clearing agent, and again, the hypo clearing agent is the same as you would do it with a roll of film in a tank um, to, for two minutes. So two minutes in the hypo clearing agent. Um, constant agitation and then at the very end of it you'll see we'll have the developer the stop bath the fixer the hypo clearing agent and then there's a fifth tank that's actually empty and the fifth tank that's empty has a little hole on the bottom and that's actually the wash tank that we use so then what we do is we will take the film on the holders and put them in here and then take it outside and then have your water temperature set to like 70 degrees and I usually put my finger down at the bottom of the tank where the hole is and hold, cover that hole until the whole tank fills to the very top. Once the tank fills to the very top and the water's running into here, um, and you have, they need to really make sure you watch the temperature, um, then I would take my finger off of there um, and let it start to drain and then just keep an eye on it that it's filling from the top and draining from the bottom, which is the way that you want to um, actually do that. Um, once I've totally done, um, with the washing of seven and a half minute wash, then I would do photo flow. And again, with the photo flow, it's a one minute in the photo flow. And what you could do is just um, put your finger on the hole at the bottom of the tank and add a, um, add a couple capfuls of photo flow to the, um, maybe a capful would be fine, to the tank right here. And then sort of put your film in and out of it and then leave it set for a minute. One other thing that's really important about dip and dunk processing is when you're putting your film in and out of the tank, um, you want to make sure that you're not swishing it side to side because if you swish it side to side what happens is you're, you can actually push the film right out. The film gets a little bit softer when it's wet and you can actually push it right out of here. So if you're done totally done processing and you look and you're missing some film you probably went like this and swished it and it pushed the film right out of the holder. So um, now once you've once you've developed the film and um, you've washed it and photo flow it, then you need to hang it to dry. And what we have is we have some little clips like this um, over in the drying cabinet. Now this is also a very important part when you're gonna hang your film to dry. What you wanna do is you wanna just barely put this clip um, onto the film and there's some um, wire that are on these and then these will hang on the thing and you wanna kinda of hang them on an angle um, but you just want to get a little bit of the, of the film. You don't want to come way down on it. One time I, I saw a student that had a really nice portrait and they actually had a bigger clip than this even and they just put the whole clip down like that and they actually went right into the person's forehead and they ruined, the, ruined that portrait. So they ruined their whole time that they spent doing it. So very you know, minimal of this the way, I, the way I have that grab there and then you need to be careful um, hanging them back into the closet and uh, the drying cabinet and make sure you don't bump anybody else's film and be respectful of everything. Um, so that's it. That's how easy it is to dip and dunk. Um, you know, um, just make sure that you have the room lights on in the room where you're going to develop if you're using a Gray Lab timer. Um, have the room lights on before you start so that it can um, charge up the um, luminescence in the timer because the, if you if the lights were out in the room and you go in there the gray lab will be very dark and you won't be able to see it so the lights actually charge up that um, uh, filament on the tape that glows in the dark on the timer so that's all the tips I hope that helps Oh,